All right, so by now you should be aware that uh, Microsoft plans to retire the Azure AD and MSL PowerShell modules at the end of 2022 or even after that. The commandlets uh, retired modules will continue to function afterwards, but there won't be any support. Hello everyone, so we, today's video we're gonna talk about how to figure out what Microsoft Craft permission you will need uh, to run the commandlets and to run the API in general. So Microsoft suggests to upgrade scripts to use the commandlet from Microsoft Graph PowerShell SDK. The actual conversion is often matter of finding the matching commandlet in uh, Microsoft commandlet map. So you can find this on this documentation. I'll paste the link in the description. However, other complexities get in a way of commandlet that will run smoothly. Uh, so the main question here is figure outing the right Microsoft Graph API permission to use uh, to access the data in just one of those complexities. All right, so Microsoft Graph, the PowerShell SDK, follows the least permission model. You. The permission handled differently. So there's a significant difference between the Azure AD PowerShell module and the Graph API PowerShell module. So when you sign in using the connect Azure AD uh, commandlet you you can use all the administrative permissions owned by the account you sign in with okay so however when it comes to graph uh, the graph api operates on the list permission module which means uh, that you must request permission to perform the action even when connecting with a highly provision permission account now the first step here is to update the script from azure ad commandlet to sdk commandlet uh, now the first thing that we need is figure out in which permission that uh, we would need in order for the script to run this rule applies no matter how you use the sdk commandlet uh, like even interactively through a background job or which uses the certificate or using the azure automation runbook unlike unlike permission inherits from the sign in user account the permission used by sdk are granted to the service principal uh, to run the SDK commandlets for interactive sessions, uh, the service principle is the Microsoft Graph. Now the question arises: uh, How to find the Graph API permission? Uh, you know, uh, which are necessary to run the action. So you, we can accomplish this particular goal uh, using one of the four ways. So the first one is uh, just guessing, guessing over the permission. So what you can do is uh, go to the Graph Explorer. I'll just go to aka.ms forward slash ge. The first method is here the guess and hope approach. Uh, in other words, grant all the permission that script might use to keep on adding the permission until your code runs. So the danger here is uh, that you will end up with heavily permission service principle that becomes an attractive target for uh, for the attackers. Like uh, if you see the example over here, my PowerShell commandlet has this many permission. I kept on adding permission until and unless my code went on running. So if you use the interactive session to run the commandlet, a fair chance exists that Microsoft Graph PowerShell service principle will acquire many permission over time. Like you see in this example, uh, you can see in the in my portal uh, and end up heavily permission state. Uh, we will. It, return to this particular issue later now let's use graph explorer to highlight the permission uh, that we'll need so if i talk about graph uh, let's suppose i want to run um, this particular api so the api that you would like to run you need to put it here uh, of course after signing in let me sign in real quick and Okay, so there you go. So I'm signed in and let's suppose this is the URL that you will need to run The graph Explorer shows you the permission required to run the query in the modify permission section So if I click on modify permission section I'll be able to see The permission that are needed to run this particular query So here it says uh, these are the permission that you will need to run this particular query so in terms of joint teams, so 
if if teams is created on azure ad group as an azure ad group then you'll need uh, directory dot read all but uh, if you just need information from teams then uh, teams dot basic dot all uh, would be sufficient and you can also see the description uh, that allows you to you know uh, have a detail of what permission is needed for what okay so in this case uh, the query is to fetch the teams that the sign in user has joined so directory dot read all is a good choice now reading the the another option here is to read the graph api documentation so if i go to the graph api documentation here so each graph api documentation has its own set of permission which are aligned which are aligned and uh, mentioned here so if you see the permission section you can see uh, the delegated or worker school account needs this many permission to run in order to you know query this particular api same thing goes for application permission all right so this is one of the ways uh, that you can query for uh, the permissions uh, microsoft uses the process called auto reset uh, to process available graph queries and create sdk commandlets now this process happens monthly to create a new version of sdk the process also creates an automated documentation but the machine generated text is often you know error prone and difficult to follow which which is why i often you know and rely and suggest depend upon the underlying documentation take for example uh, listing this uh, teams api like i said it, it displays the permission section and gives you the appropriate permission to read the api now uh, the another one uh, the other option that we have you know to get the permission is to use sdk now the sdk includes two commandlets uh, to help developers figure out uh, what permission they will need to perform the action the first one is find mg graph permission so if i quickly switch uh, to my notepad this is the commandlet that you would need to find the permission so find mg graph permission if if the permission is related to organization it will show you um, which which are the permission that you will need uh, to in order to run a query related to the organization so i'll quickly copy this query and paste it in my uh, powershell commandlet okay so if you can see uh, the permission involving organization are listed over here okay so this this give you the name and description like we saw in the graph explorer the graph explorer also displayed the name and the description of the permission the command pipe uh, you can use the command pipe uh, as the powershell uh, script allows you to run uh, to filter out and display application permission uh, same goes for the delegated permission from the output it is obvious that uh, we should use organization dot read all permission to read the organization information like for example uh, tenant name and the identifier and the organization read write all should we need to you know to update a uh, writable settings now uh, uh, for the matter of this course i've just uh, displayed the name and the description but you can get the complete output uh, if you remove that particular filter from it now you can try to run the modified version of the command to see what permission are needed to interact with users group or azure ad or with application permission and so on the find microsoft graph commandlet there's another commandlet called uh, find microsoft graph commandlet which allows you to you know run and find uh, the query related to graph so even if 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 you're not using the sdk and you're using the graph api directly so you can use the commandlet to find the corresponding permission so it is find mg graph uh, command it is 
so let me just type it real quick uh, okay so it is mg graph command and it has uri as one of those parameters groups and id all right let's let's run this oh i think i forgot to close the bracket yeah there you go so it shows you the list of uh, command and method along with the module and the permission the, the graph has two endpoints the one is the version 1.0 that you see over here and the other one is the beta the version 1.0 endpoint is the production version while the beta endpoint is just under development in many cases you will use uh, this command let's with beta endpoint just because they are they provide added functionality for example if you run uh, for example if you run mg uh, get mg user against version 1.0 uh, it it doesn't return any license information for the account uh, but when you do it run against beta uh, it, it gives you much more information than it intended to in this case uh, i have filtered out uh, output just to show the commands available okay so now next thing comes up here is scoping so once you figure out what permission are needed using uh, the methods which we discussed till now next thing you need is scoping so the state of the required permission when connecting graph uh, and the scope of the parameter so you can pass scope if you see the example over here so here uh, i'm declaring a variable called required scope and uh, giving the scope organization read write all and directory dot read dot all okay so i'll creating the variable with this name okay so our variable is ready and now I'll use connect mg graph uh, with the required scope uh, with this particular variable. So when I use this variable, it automatically gets these two scopes uh, which are listed in the variable. For interactive session, uh, if Microsoft Graph API PowerShell service principle doesn't have a consent to use the required permission, you will be prompted for the consent like, like this one. Uh, here in this page so let me enter my password real quick now if you allowed the app to use the permission the session can use the delegated version of permission for the duration of the session if you grant consent of on behalf of the organization the azure ready adds the permission to the service principle and then it becomes available for all session thereafter now the consent granted to the service uh, to the service principle for a delegated permission mean that the user is limited to whatever data is permitted by the administrator role assigned to the account okay so when when i'm doing this sign in i'm only uh, allowed to see what i'm intended to okay i won't be able to see other users details what i'm not supposed to unless you are an admin now uh, this also been explained by like the graph documentation the, the graph documentation says the effective permission of your app are the least privileged interaction intersection of the delegated permission and that app has been granted by okay so if so in other words if i just simplify it if your account holds an administrative role you will be able to access more data than if your account doesn't you won't be able to unless you are an admin yes of course okay so after connecting it now uh, if you want to check what permission act are active you can just run mg context uh, scope and this will give you the list of permission which are active so this permission are the same permission which are listed over here which you can see in the azure ad okay all right so till now what we have done is we have figured out the way to find the microsoft graph permissions and then uh, we have also done the scope part 
where you can use those permission to call the graph API and the graph SDK. Now, another thing that comes up uh, while uh, working with graph is the constant accumulation of you know the permission by Microsoft Graph PowerShell. Okay, so if you keep on working uh, with with the PowerShell module, you can see the constant increase of permission. Uh, the permission here are uh, getting uh, added one by one. So if you want to like remove all the permission from service principle, you can do so using the Azure AD admin center. So or you can you know also remove it from those uh, PowerShell script. So if I click on this, uh, click on review permission and uh, I'll click choose this option. It, it will give you the recommendation on how you can go about and remove this particular permission from in here. All right, says apart from that, um, there's also a PowerShell script that I'll paste in the description. You can use this. Uh, to remove the existing permission you will need the service principal ID and that you can find it uh, By clicking the permission itself in Azure AD. So this is the service principal ID All right, then that's all I think uh, the working with Microsoft graph PowerShell SDK requires more attention uh, to the permission than then it is the norm uh, now until uh, up till now uh, instead of assuming that administrative permission, you must request for the permission and use only the required set. Uh, that is the most suggestive way to use Microsoft Graph. It takes um, it takes a little getting used to. Uh, I can understand that it is a part of checklist for the conversion of script based on Azure AD and MS All modules. Like most other things in life, uh, we we will get used to the permission management for the connection and time. Until then, um, I'll wish you good luck while working with my.